This is a micro bag. Hey. Oh, oh. That's okay. Wait so, hi, I'm Gibson Nichols. We're with mdlug.org here in the January 2016 meeting. And we have Jacob here to talk a little bit about what he's working on. Jacob? This is a, this is a micro bag. What I'm working is called the Eagles. Center. <laughs> Just turn it off real quick. Okay. We'll put back what it was, but okay. Yeah, here's the thing. It backs up, it just backs up but it chooses a random way to go. This is the strong structure. Oh, okay. Here's the like brain whatever these are called. Motors, motors. It oh, yeah. uses um echolocation for the eyes. And uh it has these weird things that I, I forgot what they do. But um I'm gonna pass this one now. And uh yeah, whenever it goes on black, it the sensors things turns off because it's trying to tell the ground if 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 there's ground. But it will keep going even even if they're off. Yeah, they're right here. Mm -hmm. And uh I pay for for no reason. And, uh, yeah, so whatever it was called, um, whatever. Arduino. Arduino, yeah. He uses Arduino. Yeah, and that's all. Okay, so are you open for questions? Any questions? Yeah, I understand this is a kit. How long did it take you to put it all together? Forty minutes and uh, in twenty forty minutes to build it and twenty minutes to program about and test. Yeah. Now the program that, that was just running on it is that one you wrote or is that one that came with it? Um, you have to actually make all the programs. Oh. But so it doesn't come with any programs. No. So it, it actually does come with programs. Yeah. Um, the it, it comes with a built-in program that we overwrote without realizing it. Ah. Um, it comes with a remote control, so you can use it almost like an RC car. Mm -hmm. And the and default the program it has is you can yeah. control it with the remote control. The catch is the yeah, watch battery kind of thing you need for the remote does not come with the kit. Because you have to program the remote. Yeah. Questions. Interesting. So, um, what is the language that you're using to, to write this? We didn't really talk about the language. Um, we're using Scratch, which that's examples of it there. You can see that? It even has a smiley face. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like it two yeah. eyes and a big um, smile. That's what's meant to be, but they do have M's on the side. So how many sensors are on this? That's a light um, sensor. And, uh, it has two sensors. Yeah. Four. A lot of the sensors we haven't gotten into yet. We only um, have. It has a so line following sensor here, on the bottom. That there's actually two, so they can determine whether or not it's on the line. Oh. Those can actually be used oh, to speaking, tell the speaking about the end of the table too. How it rolls on two feet, but has this ball to help it stand up and not get scratched. So, yeah. So, th this would technically be two sensors, and it's actually labeled on it, uh, sensor one, sensor two. Mm -hmm. Those plug into a phone jack. Oh. You took it out. So, yeah. I want to put it in. Can I put it in? Yep, number two, please. There you go. Uh, and then we have a second phone jack, which plugs into the ultrasonic sensors. The 
these sensors are really the same like any other Arduino sensors you get. They just have special phone jack connections on them to make them easy to plug in. There are two built-in motor ports. That's all the motor ports you get. Then it has a button that you can program. Um, that, no, that's, that's when you press the button it will do the thing that you programmed on a button. So it's not the program button. I mean, wait. That, that's the button you can press. You can program the button to do something. Yeah, there's a spot where you can hook this up to your computer and do the programs. Yeah. Oh. So how do you hook it up to your computer then? Um, you just there's like a long wire. It's about a foot long. Yeah. And you put hook it up here to the computer, whatever it's called. And then you gotta drag them from the little boxes. The little boxes. So the Scratch programming language, has anyone here used Scratch before? Never even heard of it. It's really cool. I've heard of it before, but I've never actually used it up until we did this project. Basically what it is, is you have these boxes, and the different colors are different boxes. But it doesn't oh. And it's almost like putting a puzzle together. It's I not think even I've used close. That without knowing what it was. Yeah, it's, it's not, really cool. And it's not it, even close, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even close to the puzzle. Okay. Uh, but but we do not. have it uses four batteries. Called out on the internet. I've been trying to get this out. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I don't want. No, to. and then that translates into um, yes. Arduino code, which I think is basically C. I don't know the difference between. Or what makes Arduino code special, but yeah. converts to Arduino yeah. code, yeah. they can then there you go. import it into this. So how much does this cost, and where do you get it? Um, seven, seventy dollars, and I got it from my um, really? grandma yeah, and grandpa, so I have no idea what it, where it was. Okay. But it was, I know it was seventy dollars. You overheard a conversation between. Oh, okay. Me and All right. Um, so no, I heard that from a video. Well, okay, so MakerBot it, or MakerBlock is a company that makes. Uh, I believe it's a UK-based company. Um, yeah, you can go to their website and see they have a number of different products. Um, they have a so you see cloth that you can program doing the same thing. Plenty of sources on the web. Just got to, um, this I don't know supports what Bluetooth. It supports Bluetooth or. Scratch. Uh, something else. Four G wire. Scratch. Yes. Scratch. Um, and that's this scratch. piece here. So you can you can actually upgrade it. The Bluetooth it, one Bluetooth. I think is the cheaper one. Mm -hmm. I believe this is the Bluetooth. Um, can I put that in the um, And then you can upgrade that part if you want to do a 2.4 gigahertz network. Oh, okay. okay. So the idea is you could then program this probably to work with the phone with the Bluetooth. Yep. And, oh, nice. This is a much more comprehensive thing than I realized in terms of the capabilities. Oh, it's huge. Um, so it has the, the biometric okay, program. So it has a photo sensor. It has an IR it's transmitter, an IR stuff. receiver, a buzzer, and then two LEDs. Along with the motors and make you can make a class out of that. Right. When you talk about the photo one, does that mean like if the lights dim in the room that it would no it, Daddy, it, it can tell like it sensitivity. It but I mean it's not it like I don't know, like it, you couldn't like aim it at something and if the color on something changes it would detect that. No, I this I, is more I, of a light level, not so right. much like a vision. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. That and then all. infrared, cool. Well, that would mean right. that you could get it to um, receive commands from a remote control, which probably means you could program what it does. That means you could get any universal remote. Actually, we can put any program we want on it. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I don't want to give a hand so I don't have to, so, and then I want to program it to clean up. So I don't even have to do a single thing. I can just play all day. Yeah. 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 And then well, he can just clean the stuff that I make mess of, and I don't want to do it. So what other things have you seen people do with this? Um, 
show how to move in. Yeah. So are there other programs you can get for it? Is there other programs available that you can? Well, I have no idea how you, like, do you, I thought you had to, like, up, first update the program and put it in, like, the, whatever it was called, Scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it in the Scratch, then you can drag it and program it. I thought you had to, like, update it, then you could program it. Yeah, I haven't seen a whole lot of programs out there. Um, the one that we have on there is a... a I was right. Am I right? Yep. Yeah, oh. online lessons. Have you done any of the online lessons? No. No. That might be something I'm you can look at later. More screws. Daddy, do we have enough screws to give it two hands? <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm sure we can find enough screws. Good. But that means you have to get a couple more motors. And then that means you have to get a couple more, oh, what do you call them, drivers or something? Well, Welcome to the hobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you're going to, uh, there's also a claw you said, right? The yeah, there's claw. a claw thing, and it's, so this thing came with the aluminum frame, and then we had to screw everything into that. Um, the claw one comes with basically the same setup, but instead of the aluminum frame, it has a different yeah. aluminum frame to handle a claw and how to move it and close it. I do not know how much it moves. I don't know if you can spin it around like a crane and use it in that way, or I haven't really looked into it. I just know it exists. Now my question is, can you program it so you can just push a button while you're watching the movie? Refrigerator. <laughs> Yes, you know, go to the refrigerator, yeah. grab me a beer, and bring it back to me. Well, so the reason, the reason I... Actually, you would have to buy that. I'm for that. Oh. I, I, well, you have to find it. Just, just look it up where it is, and then you, and then you have it. Yeah. And then you know where it is, because, you know, you have to save up for seven, eight hours. Yeah. Well, so I have a friend who's a quadriplegic, and he can't use his hands, and can't walk, and... So this might be something, you know, that eventually that technology is going to be usable right. for him to pick things up and move things around. But oh, yeah. I'm just wondering how far they are on, on doing that. At this point, it looks like they're probably pretty crude and not no, really usable. No, they're really close. And they're helpful. Um, I, I set up a program on the Raspberry Pi you know that you controls a uh, webcam. Yeah. The webcam can tilt, rotate and all that. And so if the Raspberry Pi watches the video, finds a face, and will move the webcam to track the face. Wow. And that's nice. on the Raspberry Pi, I'm controlling the webcam through that. Very cool. So, and that's a really basic project for a lot of things that I've seen done on the internet. You know, I've seen little robots, ads I should say, for little robots. I'll bet. That there are things that, you know, if you wanted it to find your keys and bring them back to you. Right. Actually, I call this a microbot. Yeah. Sure it is. Yep. Yeah, definitely. That's why I um, need it. There's a. It might, it's the best. It might. I don't like it. It's a good name. It is a good name. And it makes him happy. That's why he's smiling. Oh, okay. That, okay, I like that. Um, there's a, a program car called ROS, Robot Operating System. Mm -hmm. it's, you install it onto yeah. a Linux operating system, so it's not an operating system of itself, but it has a number of programs in it to make a um, robot and be able to control it. And it's set up in such a way that you, you can use Arduino, you can use uh, Xbox Connect, you can use all these different products. Oh, that's awesome, because I've been thinking I could just like give it taller feet, so then I can just make it drive a car and walk. Do cool stuff, and yeah. then, then I can make it hold money and go and get stuff from me that I want. So like, but I still have to use my money. Yeah. I it could just instead of me going to a place, I could just sit down and I could wait for the robot to um go get me something that I want with my money, so I don't have to actually go. Would it be easier just to have something like my quadcopter. Bring it to the house. You don't even have a quadcopter. <laughs> I don't even know what a quadcopter is. And yeah. I can't even say it because I need speech. The helicopter thing? That would fly in the house and land on Mama's head? 
We can edit that out of YouTube, right? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Just add it in YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, if you're interested in robots, the ROS thing is really cool. It's also a whole lot of money when you look at the parts that you actually would want to build a robot. Trust me, yeah. this thing includes tax. Yeah. So it's like seventy-five dollars. So what next are you gonna do with it? Give it hands. With hands. Okay. I need hands. I need it to have hands and feet. We really don't like cleaning up our toys. Yeah. Um, you know what I think would be cool? If you program it so that it would go around and write your name. Oh, yeah. Uh, wouldn't that just be illegal? Illegal? No. I have no idea how it would be illegal. <laughs> I mean, well, you know how to make it turn left and turn right and go forward and go back, right? But that kind of goes with the hand pot. And besides, it just goes in random spots. Oh, and it, it can also do math. Wow. I've been wanting to bring it to school so it, I can just randomly, I could want, <laughs> I could ask the answer and it would tell me it. I've been wanting to do. Can I kind of do it? No. Aw. Uh, homeschool? Homeschool? No. You know, the funny thing is, I look at that and I keep thinking the two things I'd want would be a little camera and some type of an LED display that would scroll. Yep. It wouldn't even have to say much, but if it could type out, I don't know, maybe two lines of eight, uh, that would be good enough for me. And then any kind of message it would have, it would just scroll. So it has a seven-segment display that you can get for it. Um, oh, okay. um, I know that's not quite what you're But, you know, of, but two of those might work. What do you think the application would be for that? You get a camera and you get a little display. What would you do with that? Oh, well, you know, I could use it for different things. One thing I could do is have it chase my dog. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, if you get a dog, I would give a hand so it could feed the dog. The dog would love it if this thing knew how to go in and open the treat jar, oh. grab a treat, <laughs> close the jar, and then go to the dog and give the dog the treat. Wait, but you My have to make it. Love um, that. You have to make it spit proof <laughs> first. Make it spit proof first. Yeah. Spit proof. Yes. You know it how dogs love spit to proof lick. First. <laughs> yes. Well, well so if you... My dog isn't bad. You know, like some dogs drool. My dog doesn't. Yeah, well, so if you if you I don't even have a dog. Yeah. You'd have to be careful with cats, so they'd hack into it and, and reprogram it. So. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I hear cats love to push buttons. Oh, temperature sensors. You know, maybe I should look into an Arduino. Believe it or not, the one thing that I would like is to know when there is standing water in my basement. Actually, you know, you can make a waterproof to... so I can put pipes together. Yeah. That'd be cool, cause then, cause then, it... oh yeah, you should give like the robot a job, like um, you could make it a plunger and then it would plunge other people's things <laughs> and it would get money. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I, how I'd feel if one of those things showed up at my door with a plunger in its hand, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and it's claw, excuse me. Trust yeah. me, I'm not going to write my name on it. I'm never going to write my name on this thing. Well, yeah, well, see, I wouldn't want you to write your name on it. I'd want it no. to, to make a path. I'm, I'm thinking, you know? I'm thinking you can you can put put no Pen part of it. Right. 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 Oh, well, that's how it makes up the toys. It pushes the toys into the yeah. pile. That's what I was thinking. There you go. Be a cool way of doing it. Oh, something that puts oh. the toys away for them? Yeah. Yeah, I've oh, been, yeah. that's why I've been wanting to get How about it something that puts, puts itself away, right? Um, so it goes and parks into a certain spot? Yeah, yeah you could program it. <laughs> you, oh, that'd be cool. I, I want to program it to fly next. Fly. So yeah. then it can fly to its spot. I'm not sure if you can do hover, that. Hover, hover, hover. I think it's a little heavy. Hover. We'll give it a certain 
It'll hover. It'll hover very slowly. Like this. This slow. And then it can hover higher. 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 You can only hover this high. From here to the ground. Now you need a quadcopter. I'm gonna give it wings. <laughs> <laughs> wings don't do anything. It's for vertical lift. Did you okay. guys hear about the uh, new FAA regulation for quadcopters? Yep. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Is yours more than half a pound? I don't think so. That one is flying at least. You can right. It. You can control <laughs> it. Yeah, I, 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 I waited while well. it was flying. It was good. It. <laughs> so it's going to get... There's a magic way you control You can control it. You just you just push the wheels. Well, yourself. just push the wheels. So, um, Until it falls off. So I would think that's going to mean that everyone is going to start making these quadcopters that are just below that requirement, and get those become very sophisticated. And then you'll be yeah. able to get the yeah. multiple ones play the that game. Will play together no, and stuff. No, I'm playing you know? a game. Don't go off the table. So you can't, you, know, you can't have a heavy one, but you can have, you know, ten light ones that all right. work together. Don't, don't go off the table. But the registration isn't that bad. You basically, just pay the FAA five dollars, and they give you a serial number, <laughs> and you use that number for all of your quadcopters. Oh, one. So number does all. It, yeah. So the number goes to you, not your captures. Right. And you uh, just got to go online and get. It's just five bucks. Free. Yes, five dollars. Actually, I think if you do it now, they have Daddy. the first thirty days of when the ruling came out Daddy. is free. Daddy. 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 Quarter pound. It, anything over a half a pound. Daddy. So you have to go out and buy one now and register it, so you don't have to get hit. Well, over I, have, it. I don't even think you have to buy one. You just oh yeah, you don't have to buy one. Just go register, oh. and it's good for whatever you do buy because there's, you're basically putting your name on it. You're not putting. Yeah, you're not. It's you're not like it's tagged. They got a, right. right. Well, so it's not like CB radios where you had a certain ID for each radio. Right. Yeah. And the serial number they give you, you do have to put on the quadcopter, or you just put it like on the, underneath the battery panel or something. You just put the same one on all of them. At least according to the FAQ from the FAA. You guys are oh, talking about nice. Yeah, I think we're interested in myself. No, we're talking about airplanes. Okay, okay. So, so are we done with your presentation? I'm out of this. I'll take that. Okay, Jacob, <laughs> thank you very much. Yay.